verse 17 through 19. Look what it says here. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten, his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And then it says, accounting that God was able. You, here's the faith part. It, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead if necessary. You see, Abraham wasn't worried about it. From whence also he received him in a figure. That was written later on. Abraham, all he knew is he had to obey. He had to surrender. He had to trust God, and he had to exercise that faith. And he, he took that child, he took Isaac, and he did exactly as God told him. And then he turned around two verses later and told his two men, you wait here because we'll be back. We're going to worship, but we're coming back to you. And when he told them that, he exercised a great amount of faith not knowing how. All he knew is God was able, whatever he told him to do in offering him as a sacrifice, Isaac was the promised child. God could undo anything that he had done. God could do anything. It said he had, he could raise him up, he said, if necessary. See, we, we say, let go and let God. We need to let go and let God. Amen? Let go and let God. But I'm going to tell you, it goes a little further than that. After we let go and we let God, now we need to trust God and get going because that's exactly what Abraham did. Okay, God, it's all yours. Now what do I do? Okay, I'm going. Let go and let God and then trust him and let's get going ourselves. Fourth and most important, we must accept the gift of God, which is eternal life through his precious son, Jesus Christ, as it tells us in Romans chapter 6, 23. And this will be the last verse I have you look up. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. We must accept the gift of God. And it says here, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We must accept the gift. If we exercise these, first, these four steps, then God will set our feet back on the road that will lead us clearly to our eternal home. Repent is the first one. Acknowledge our condition. Or I'm sorry, we must acknowledge our condition is the first one. And come to our senses. If we can't do that, then we're not, we can't even get started. Just acknowledge our present condition that without God, we're nothing. Without God, we can do nothing. Without God, we can't even inhale our very next breath. Only by his grace. So acknowledge our present condition that without him we could do nothing then we must repent ask forgiveness and seek sanctification and then when we do that we must be willing to let go let God trust God and get going because we must be willing to fully surrender fully trust obey and fully exercise the faith and then the fourth if we've done all of that and we reject Jesus Christ, the gift, the greatest gift we'll ever have, or this world will ever know, then all was done in vain. We must remember to accept the special gift of God. Those four things I wanted to share with you this morning. You know, God has done everything that a loving God could possibly do to save his children that are lost to get us right back on the road that would lead us home. He's done everything that he could. He's emptied all of heaven 
and even to the death of his son, his only son, his only begotten son, whom he loves, even to his death for you and for me. God has no desire that anyone be destroyed, not a one. Ezekiel 33, 11, you don't have to turn there. It just tells us that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that they will turn from their evil ways and live, he says, live eternally. And God pleads, he says, turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die when you don't have to. Why would you die? Why will you die, O oh, house of Israel? These words should run freezing chills down our spines to solidify our backbone that we will give way to the word of God, nothing else but that we would give way to God's pleading, to the master's call that says, I want to take you home. Are you homesick for heaven? I want to take you home. You know, I know some of us, some of us has been away from home for some time. I mean the heart of God home, the fully surrender to God home. We've been away from home, the fully trusting God home. We've been away from home for some time, and now, now it's time to return. It's time to come home. Jesus is pleading, come home. The Father is pleading, come home. Come home, he says. Oh, won't we answer his call? Won't we answer the call of Jesus? Even right now, will we answer? You know, if it's your desire, if it's your desire that you want to say, Lord, you know, I want to come home because I, I've been there. It doesn't matter what it is we've done. But because we've all been there at one point or time or another. But if it's your desire to say, Lord, you know, I want to come home. Set my feet on the path that leads me to the eternal home. I just invite you now to just stand and let's just have a special prayer. Just stand and let's have a special prayer and ask God to set our feet on the path that would lead us to our eternal home. Father God, each one of us stand before you this blessed Sabbath day as we worship in the beauty of your holiness and the host of heaven this morning. We ask you, Father, forgive us where we failed you time and time again. Forgive us, Father, we know we're not even worthy to have your holy, sacred name grace across our sinful lips yet you bid us come to the foot of your mighty throne and come boldly you say so father here we are this morning not because we're worthy by any means but because your grace is sufficient for us this very moment thank you father we're here because you bid us to come and father we ask this morning to forgive us we acknowledge our current condition, that we need you. We want to repent. Father, we want to exercise our faith, trust you fully. And we want, Father, to accept the special gift of your son Jesus that you've given us this morning. And so we place all this before you in the hollow of your mighty hands. For this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God knows our desire this morning. He hears our pleas and he hears and uh, he, he hears our plea. 
And he's heeding our call this morning. And we've answered him by saying, Lord, we do want to be there. And so we are, we've answered by uh, standing this morning. And now it's time to answer him in song. As Kathy leads in our closing hymn here this morning, Lord, I'm coming home. <laughs> 